Viewers, I knew a day like this would come soon. Of course, the open source Stable Diffusion XL released very recently. This AI art generator model is nearly as good as Midjourney, all while being completely free and open source, meaning users can manipulate and modify it however they want. And by doing so, they can do some really unique and interesting things that you can't just do with the regular Stable Diffusion base model. Today, we're looking at a LoRa that essentially takes Stable Diffusion XL and turns it into the pixel art making machine. I mean, this thing could be used in professional games easy. It's awesome. And of course, it's all completely free for you viewers to use at home. Let's dive into this. So viewers, this model was actually released yesterday by Brandon G. Neary, and it's just stable diffusion pixel art. You can see how good it truly is in these examples. Here we've got a woman with some leaves in the background and she's all bejeweled up, but it looks like it came straight out of a retro video game. Same thing goes for this one. It's a little T-Rex in a tuxedo. He's got a hat on, really nice. And then we've also got this cute little Corgi. He's cartoony, but in the perfect pixel art style. Now, viewers, normally when you try to do pixel art on one of these AI art generators, it looks a little something like this. This is Midjourney 5.2 with the prompt pixel art Corgi standing on a blue background. And as you can see, there are some pixel hard lines in there and it's very cartoony and there's a little bit of pixelness going on. It's just very smooth lines. You don't get that pixel perfect edge that you're expecting with normal pixel art. And the other thing too is all of these generations are in 1024 by 1024, which is a pretty high resolution for an AI art generator. But in the case of pixel art, we actually want it in the exact resolution for use in a video game, for example. So what's great about this SDXL LoRa model is that it actually does produce that kind of output. So if you go ahead and click the link down in the description below, you'll be brought to Civit AI. This is where you can actually find a ton of these SDXL modified LoRa's and checkpoint files and all this other stuff. And that's kind of where things start to get complicated. It's a little bit nuanced to set this up and we'll go into it. I'll provide useful resources for setting this up. But yes, viewers, we can see some more phenomenal examples on here where it just produces really great pixel art that just looks looks like pixel art from a video game. It's exactly what you expect when you think pixel art, and it just is honestly pretty much good enough to use in video games for most examples. This is phenomenal. So how do we actually use this thing? Well, first of all, we do have to download it, and we also need an SDXL checkpoint of some form, and of course, a program to run it on our own machines. In this case, I'm gonna be using Comfy UI. Now, viewers, I'm gonna go ahead and link you down in the description to Comfy UI. This is something that will open up in your browser and act as a user interface to generate on your own machine from. It's not too complicated at all to install. All you have to do is actually download it with this link down in the description, put your two models inside of the respective folders that they belong in, and then go ahead and load up the pixel art UI inside of Comfy UI. That is going to look a little something like this. You're gonna have to download it as a zip file, then extract it, convert it to a .json, load it up inside of Comfy UI. I'm not doing a great job of making this look simple, but I promise you it's not bad at all. A full tutorial on how to get Comfy UI running will be linked down below. So what's going on in here? This is our SDXL model, essentially. This gets plugged into a LoRa. All this really is is a tiny little stable diffusion model that gets applied to an existing stable diffusion model and makes some slight changes or adjustments. In this case, it's going to be making our beautiful pixel art happen. Over here is where we're going to go ahead and input our positive prompt. And down here is where we're going to put in our negative prompt. I think these stock settings are pretty good. I wouldn't change this negative prompt at all, and I would only adjust some of this positive prompt. It then goes into the base case sampler. This is where your seed is. This is where your steps are, CFG scale. You can pretty much just leave this alone. Saves the image raw, downscales it, and also upscales it for you. So you do get three different outputs, and I'll explain what each of those are. But yeah, you don't actually have to set up all these random nodes inside of Comfy UI. You can pretty much just press this load button and run that JSON. I'm gonna link you guys down in the description below and it loads us up for you. All you have to do is select the Stable Diffusion Checkpoint and the LoRa. 
Anyways, as you can see, our first output image here was quite good. This is a top-down view of a hospital in like a Stardew Valley video game style. We can see some beautiful little trees, a nice little hospital, a nice cutout top-down view, and it's just a nice generation. As you can see with this model, we actually do generate in 1024 by 1024, but we have extra steps in here to downscale it to 128 by 128, which gives us a pixel perfect rendition. And what's great about the pixel perfect rendition is that you can actually use it in a video game if you wanted to. As you can see, this is me opening up that downscaled version. You can see it's actually perfectly pixelated. I could drop that right into a game. I have a feeling that this thing is going to be popular for that exact reason. So let's go ahead and try some prompts. Let's go for our classic lemon prompt. I'm going to keep in that simple flat colors and Stardew Valley style. Now all we have to do is press the Q prompt button and you can actually see everything light up green and eventually generate our end images. In my output folder here, you can see, like I said, we're going to get three different images. We get the base generation that comes out of stable diffusion. You can see it's a little bit blotchy and weird, but pretty much close to perfect pixel art. It then gets downscaled to 128, which perfects it and makes it pretty much usable right in a video game. And then finally, it gets upscaled back to that high quality 1024 by 1024 for use on like social media, for example, where you actually need the high res. But viewers at home, what do you think of this lemon character guy? Honestly, in the output, I think that this is mighty impressive. The pixel art is almost perfect, as we can see with these leaves here. He definitely looks like a lemon. Absolutely, he's got little hands and little feet. He's relaxing on a beach chair. Clearly, we can see the ocean in the background. It's really, really nice generation. It looks like human-made pixel art. I especially love the mouth there with the little detail, one pixel making up his, uh, his tongue line. And don't forget about his leafy hair. Let's try some celebrities. That would be really fun. All right, we're going to go for Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like a character selection style close-up image. And we will cue the prompt. It generates pretty fast on my RTX 4080, so thank you, NVIDIA, for actually sending that out to me. It makes things like this possible. Oh my god, look at Dwayne. There he is. He's on the tropical island, too, for some reason. I guess that's kind of where he belongs. But we can see our final upscaled result here with Dwayne. It's not exactly a close-up, but he's just standing there like a video game character. The tropical trees in the background are marvelous. I'm really impressed by those. And Dwayne looks pretty good, too. But, of course, with the pixel art, it's a little bit difficult to make out his facial details. Let's see if we can get a closer-up picture. Oh, actually, sunglasses and tropical were still in the prompt, and that's why we uh, we got those. <laughs> Let's literally put, like, character selection in the prompt and cue a brand new prompt. Again, this is the magic of open source. SDXL being open source allows for amazing pixel art models to happen just like this. Okay, so we got a bunch of people here, but uh, no Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I think the character selection was uh, screwing it up there. Close up of face. I guess this could be like a younger Dwayne The Rock Johnson or something like that. Not exactly him, though. Ah, there we go, viewers. That's more like it. We've just got his face floating in the abyss here. And yeah, it definitely does look pretty close to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's got some facial hair, though. And with a little bit of tweaking from the negative and positive prompt, we have a perfect rendition of a Dwayne The Rock Johnson character selection. So if you're making a pixel art style game with Dwayne The Rock Johnson present, you might want to pick this as your profile picture. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, this does look really good. Lots of great detail on his skin. It looks very pixel arty, if that's even a word. Like the way that it outlines the different shadows and colors, it's cartoonish, but also only utilizes some simple colors to make it have that retro feel. Really impressive. What's also really cool about Comfy UI is that we can do a batch count, so if I want to generate 20 images, I can also do that. Press Q prompt, and then it's going to go ahead and do that. At no cost to me, because it's all generating on my own machine. I'm trying to generate uh, cars right now. We could take a look. It does that hard, cartoony shadow like you expect from pixel art. Hey guys, check it out. This one actually came with like a nice tree in the background, and he's skidding around, and there's a little bit of scenery there. Really nice. Oh, this one came out really nice as well. You can see the car is just driving some faint trees and clouds in the background. I love the pixel art art style. This is so much 
fun to generate with, and you won't find it a better pixel art style than this. We can pretty much at this point imagine anything that we want in the pixel art art style. Ronald McDonald as a 16-bit boss in a horror game. Alright, starting off extremely creepy here with Ronald McDonald as this video game boss. He's just standing there menacingly ready to attack you and take you on. Wow, it's actually shocking how similar these are all coming out. He's uh, very, very close to the last one. And then finally, this one might be the most creepy, but uh, yeah, he's in his big purple suit just staring at you. I'm not so sure uh, I like this. All right, let's try to generate Steve Jobs. All right, our first one here came out shockingly good, to be honest. This is like Steve Jobs in what, the, the 90s, early 2000s, something like that? He still has quite a lot of hair on his head, but undoubtedly Steve Jobs, especially with that black turtleneck. We've got a smaller generation of Steve Jobs. You know, maybe this is for the character selection screen when you're picking your character, you select Steve Jobs, and then this is what you see right up next to your life or hearts in the top corner of the screen as you're running around as Steve Jobs. We've got this one too. This is definitely a younger Steve Jobs. Lots of hair on his head there. That's probably Steve Jobs' goal in the game is to get younger so he can run Apple in his own design forever. All right, let's go for a watermelon-themed building. Try to get creative with it. Whoa, this design is actually really, really cool, viewers. That's one of the things about pixel art is that you always get creative and unique designs. We got little watermelon plants in the beginning, a nice door. Look at how good that door is. That's like straight up usable in a game. That's crazy. We got the, the trees in the back and it looks all watermelony. This looks like something you would see in a watermelon world. And it's also got a white background. So it's easy to just cut out and drop right in a game. This is just insane. Here's our next one. Still very, very good, although I wouldn't say it's as good. This is kind of a little bit weird looking. But I mean, just think about all this stuff. This is like a smaller little tiki house. It's it's such a good place to start off from. And it would take just a very small amount of tweaking to make that usable for a straight up video game. So like, imagine what AIs are going to be able to do, like AI agents that can take models like these, learn to code, and combine it all into a video game and a product that's completely unique that we haven't seen before and looks human-made. I'm going to try a Bumblebee character. Again, letting this thing be creative, I think, is a very, very good idea based off of what we've seen so far. And that's definitely true. 100% a Bumblebee character right there. It looks phenomenal. We've got another one here. This is a little bit different. He looks like a straight up Bumblebee, or maybe this is like some Bumblebee armor. It looks kind of metallic there. Either way, I could see that in a video game. This looks much more like a regular bee, I, I would say. Let's try like a character that's already pixel art. So here is the Pikachu we generated. And I mean, that is pretty much shockingly good right there. That's like what you expect to see on your little Nintendo DS as a kid. If I saw that, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's Pikachu in the game. Just created by the, the creators, not an AI generation. Whoa, this came out so good. Check it out, viewers. This is a, uh, a man riding a giant turtle, and you can see he's just traveling through the forests. Look at that unique tree in the background. I love the creativity of this uh, combo, the SDXL and the Laura making amazing pixel art. Look at this giant turtle. He's so menacing, and there's just a little guy on top. Like, sure, his face is a little screwed up, but how difficult would it be to tweak that? And check this one out. This one's almost perfect. I am just shocked right now. This is amazing. His legs are a little screwed up, but other than that, oh man, really, really great stuff. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff like this coming out in the future that utilize SDXL. I am super excited. This was amazing. I'll link everything useful down in the down in the description below. Make sure you check out my Discord server, by the way, viewers, and share your best pixel results because I want to see them. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.